we have on the program two people in 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 shows, you know, in movies, mm. just got back from China, who if you looked at both of you yeah. and just heard what you were just doing, everybody would go, goals, both of you, right? But you just both identified the fact that as you assess yourselves, mm -hmm. right, you are so far away from what you want to be right. that nobody would ever be able to tell. Right. And right. that's the value of a soul conversation, yep. where you can just say that, right? You can say your truth, right? Yep. Get it out there and, and have it done in a company of people who understand what you're saying, because mm -hmm. I feel what you're saying. You don't have to explain a damn thing to me. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I, I, I have had seasons in my life where people thought I was doing wonderful. Yeah. And what they didn't know was, oh, hell was breaking out. Two yeah. blinks from a tear. Yeah. 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 Let me throw my shoe at you. <laughs> Say that again. Two blinks from a tear. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it stolen. You're about to steal it. You're going to hear that tomorrow on my headline. <laughs> Two blinks from a tear. So let me ask you this. Yeah. There's, there's, there's always and we always have a river that we can't seem to cross. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about a river is you can look on the other side and see where you want to go, yeah. but you recognize that you can't get there without getting wet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I want to know is, what's your river? What's the name Ooh. of your river? Ooh. How long we got? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... I was just saying that I've been re-examining kind of where I'm going and things, and I'm at a point right now where I grew up in a very, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, but I grew up in a very uh, skid row. Hmm. You know, we grew up down there. You know, lost both of my parents at 14. I've been on, on my own since I was 14. Hmm. Hustle, hustle, grind, grind to get where I need to get. Survival mode all the way because that's what I need to do to survive. Hmm. However, what I'm realizing is when you cannot shift off survival mode, you're always on the defensive, mm -hmm. always looking for things that are going to go wrong, and it makes you scared to plant because mm -hmm. you're ready to jump and leave again because yeah. you got to survive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm the the river I'm crossing is trying to get out of the mentality of um, staying in one place long enough to build because I'm afraid it might crumble. So I'd rather move first than to you yeah. know allow it to crumble. So I'm I'm dealing with that of not knowing how to set, settle somewhere, stay settled. Mm. which is why I travel, which is a good thing. Traveling is great, but when you really want to build... Unle unle unless it's running. There it is. Unless it's running. There it is. Yeah, yeah. There that's, it good. Is. that's rich. Whew. That's rich. That's nice. real. I, I yeah. almost say that. That's rich. It's real. I can relate to that. Thank you. Cool. Devin, what's the name of your river? Whew, man. Mine will probably be called the Beautiful Disaster. Mm. Mm. How so? Um... Like you said earlier, looking from the outside in, you can see somebody else's life and be like, oh, I want their life, or their life, is, you know what I'm saying, it seems like it's glamorous, or it's, it's fun, or it's, you have a lot of connects to certain different like, levels and, and, and doors to life, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But um, like, I surround myself with like, people who are like, way higher in the totem pole than I am, so they, they teach me. Mm -hmm. And they always teach me to shoot for the stars, so if you miss, you land on the clouds. Mm -hmm. And I, I, like my road, everybody's road is different, but like I just, it's been a lot of speed bumps, a lot of detours, a lot of mudslides. Be more specific. Be more uh, specific. And let me, let me tell you why. Because I think that, you know, no one could look at you and not know that you are gifted, and that you are charming, and that you have ability. Thank you. And people, people will see you and make a whole set of assumptions about you. Mm -hmm. You as well, Josephine. But it's important that this audience understand. I love when my audiences get to understand people at a, at a way deeper level to say, don't let the look fool you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't let the height and the charm fool you. Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's, a, there's a river that I'm trying to cross, and that river is as big as yours and as deep as yours, and I'm going to get as wet as you do no matter how talented I may be. So I'm going to push you to be more specific because you're helping people who are watching this understand that it's okay to be real, to yeah. name it. You can't be the thing you won't name. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I don't really have like too much help from like a lot of people, like a lot of my peers, or I don't have too many friends. I have a lot of associates or acquaintances. I don't have, like, you know, I really don't have friends like that. I remember growing up, I used to have friends, or I used to care about friends and want to have friends, but now that I'm older and I'm a man, I could really care less about who likes me or who doesn't like me. Um, I feel only time will tell who's really real, who's going to be around for you and be around for you.
-hmm. But also, sometimes the ones who know you the longest will be the ones who will stab you in the back the worst. So it's, it's, no. a, it's a balance that you kind of just kind of take the road with the punches. That, that's wisdom. But, but let me say this, and I'm going to ask both of you this. Doesn't, doesn't it suck to be betrayed? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It like it, it, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's just the worst feeling in the world to yeah. trust somebody. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then to have somebody stab you in the back. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming both of you have been through that. Yeah. Way too many times. So you, you would say that your river is what? It's a, it's a soap opera. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, man, it's, 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 it's a lot of good times, a lot of fun, but it's like I said, it's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that, like you said, people may not necessarily want you to know about their lives because right. everybody's so to themselves and they want, like you said also about the Instagram thing, everybody on Instagram, people post what they want you to see. Yeah. Right. Like I, what, I make, what role does anxiety play in your life? A big one. <laughs> How so? Uh, I'm hard on myself and like uh, I guess just like previous issues, unresolved issues that I kind of like, like you said earlier as a man, like as, as men, we don't like to talk about our feelings. Mm -hmm. I don't, something happens with me, I'm not about to hit one of my boys and be like, bro, let me tell you what happened today. Like, but that's the, yeah, that's, right. that's the first thing girls do. Yeah, that's the first thing girls do. Something right. happens to them, they tell each other blow by blow, play by play, what happened to them all day, every day. And like, you know what? That's, group, why, that's, group why text. They, that's why they live longer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Yeah, because honestly, honestly, yeah, like, honestly, like what men do, it is a stress factor, and it def definitely weighs on you in the long run. So, so you know, I, my, my sense of you, because anxiety is always a connecting emotion, right? Mm -hmm. Anxiety is a, uh, it's it's not what you call a primary emotion, right? Primary emotions are uh, fear, grief, love, love anger. anger yeah. So, what is your anxiety? What primal emotion? It. More so, what primal emotion is your anxiety connected to? Anger, fear, grief, love. Mm, good question. Probably, for sure, anger. Anger. And then probably grief. What are you grieving? Um, like we all, like we all, you know what I'm saying? We're all out here in life trying to be the best version of ourselves. And no story. What are you grieving? I'm gonna make you come to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my father passed away probably like I think like five, six years ago, mm. and uh, he had a liver and kidney failure. Mm. And my father taught me everything I know about sports. He honestly was the smart. I, I he was the smartest man I've ever seen in my life. Like he went on Jeopardy a couple times. Um, I remember going. I tell this story to my like my friends. Like, but uh, like I remember going to grocery stores with him when I was a little kid. And we would have like a grocery basket, like probably like with 300, 400 dollars worth of like groceries. Mm -hmm. And we would walk up to the teller, and she's divvying everything up, and she's like, "Okay, sir, it's this much." And he'll look at the he'll look at the receipt and be like, "No, nah, that's not it." She'd be like, "Sir, it's a computer." Like, what do you mean? And right. he'd be like, "No, do that again. Check it again." And she, lo and behold, she'll check it again, and she would overcharge us for about. Sammy out with the stuff. Like I used to call him the human calculator. It was crazy. He could like he could add up numbers and digits wow. like like Say a mathematician. His name. his name was Steven. Steven. Yeah. Your name your name? Stefano. Stefano, yeah. okay. Yeah. He's Italian. My mother's black and they're American. Mm. So um yeah, I never really honestly, I never really like uh dealt with that. Cause it was like within a week I had a father and within a week I didn't have a father. Like everything mm. just happened so fast. Mm. And um, I guess my way of dealing with it was not dealing with it. Like, to this day, people ask me if he's like, well, so where's your father? They'll catch me up sometimes, like, we're having conversations about people's parents, and I'll, I'll say was. And they'll be like, was? What do you mean? Like, he's, I'll tell them, I'm like, no, he's still in Miami. My dad's in Miami. I just don't feel like talking about it. I don't feel really? like getting deep. I don't, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Like, oh, well, I'm sorry. So what happened with your dad? Like, oh, yeah. like, I don't feel like, like I just don't too. really want to talk about it. Like, yeah. yeah like, I'm, you know, Josephine, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, get to your running in a second, cool. just, just to get you to talk cool. about it. But, but if, if I may, I, I want to stay here with you, Stefano, yeah. because sure. what, what interests me about what you're saying is, you know, it's, it's deep yeah. to the degree that you don't even like to tell people because you don't want to retell the story. Exactly. Right. And, and is, is it that the retelling of the story takes you back? Yeah, I have to relive that. Relive the grief, yeah. yeah. But let, let, let me, I promised I wasn't going to do therapy, but just, but just, just one <laughs> sentence. That's cool, I need it. But one, one sentence. 
because I would, I would offer to you, invite you to consider the possibility that it's the not telling of the story that makes you relive it, mm. not the telling of the story. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't tell the story, it lives in you, mm -hmm. and it takes on a life of its own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when you speak it, it becomes more real. And the more real it becomes, the more it becomes manageable because you reduce it down. Anything you can't talk about and put in words is overwhelming. Maybe also in my head, I, I, that's my way of not dealing with it. And like, I, I could like trick myself out and make yeah. me think that he's still alive and he's in Miami on a boat somewhere fishing. Yeah. It's, like, it's all a defense mechanism. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you are seriously grieving. Definitely. Now, now, now with most, Josephine, I, pr I promise. No, I promise. You, I'm, I'm but, listening. But, but, but with most people, what they do with grief is either they try to uh, work it away, they try to sex it away, they try to, uh, 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 dissimulate, they'll lie about it. How do you deal with the dysfunctional side of your grief? Um, We're getting real now. I'm a, I'm a, like I said, I'm an actor comedian. I love comedy shows. Mm -hmm. My boy D. Ray Davis, you know what I'm saying? He has a comedy show every Monday, Hollywood Improv. I love comedy. I love telling jokes. I love making people laugh. I love to laugh. Um, yeah, probably diving into work. Like, I'm a writer also. I write like a. Uh, awesome. Um, sketch comedy, I write uh, a couple different TV series I'm working on right now, a couple different movie scripts, like, so, probably diving into work, and at first it was playing sports. Right. And then, actually, you know what, when he first passed, like, it was sports, but it's, it's kind of funny, but in a sick way, because the thing that he passed from is what I took to when he passed. I started drinking a lot. Mm. And, mm. yeah, so I was drinking a lot, I was partying a lot. Uh, I played sports a lot. Um, I worked a lot on my craft. Anything I could just take my mind off of it. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, Josephine, because um, the counselor in me is, uh, it, here, here's what he's saying in a very different way than he's saying it, mm. right? Because most people would hear what he just said in terms of the drinking and all that as, as something negative. I don't hear it that way. Yeah. I mean, I hear it as uh, he's, it, how old were you? I'm sorry, when he passed? Yeah. Uh, probably like 22, 23. So it's, it's a 22 year old's way of staying connected and honoring a father because this is what he did and this yeah. is what I do. Mm -hmm. Your thing is Ooh. running. Uh -huh. What are you running from? And I got, I got, I got like a minute before I I haven't quite figured it out, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but we grew up, and my mom, she had cancer. Uh, and we lived in motel after motel, and we would stay at a motel for 28 days, have to check out for two days and go back. So I think I've always learned to move. I've learned to move since I was 12, 13. Mm. So staying in one place is scary because I don't know how to control it. If I can move, I can control how I feel in that, that place for a while. Mm. So, but I don't know exactly what I'm, I'm running from, to be honest. That's interesting. Figuring it out. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, and look, look, we all are. We all are. I mean, we're all including Dr. Sean. <laughs> We're all trying to figure out what, what the hell's going on inside of us. But, but what makes what you've already <laughs> said valuable is that, mm. I, again, anything you can't talk about controls you. Mm. It does. And it controls you at a level you don't even understand. And that's why it's important for us to have these kind of conversations yeah. and to be real and to be vulnerable and to be honest because it's only in honesty that we can be free. And that's what life is all about.